Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the CTCL Virtual Days College Fair. Um, this next presentation, we are hearing from representatives from Hiram College. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you to our panelists. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to ask questions of our presenters at any time, and do ask questions. That's why we're all here. We love to answer your questions. We want you to learn as much as possible about Hiram College and about the college admission process in general, so don't be shy. Ask your questions. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists can't see or hear you, so the Q&A function is really the the only way you have to communicate with us. So do use it. Um, this is just one of many sessions as part of this College Fair series, the CTCL Virtual Days. So be sure to sign up for others. You can do that on the same website where you registered for this. Also, the presentation is being recorded and will be available in about a week, as will all the other presentations that are being done. So come back. You can revisit this presentation or check out some of the other colleges that you might have missed. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Emma and Haley, our presenters from Hiram College, thank you. Thanks, Josh. Okay, so let me um, share my screen so you all can see what I see. Here we go. Um, we'll just take a little bit of a, a second to introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Haley Skeens. I'm an admission counselor at Hiram, um, and this is my second year here. And then my name is Emma Harding. I'm also an admission counselor here. I'm about two months in, um, learning on the fly uh, co during COVID time. So, um, but I love it. I know Hiram from my siblings. So I'm very familiar with the college prior to, to being here. So cool. Um, so we're gonna get started with our presentation. Feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, and you know, this is Hiram. We're excited to, to show you guys a little bit about it. All right, so just gonna start with a few fast facts, a few just kind of basic information about Hiram here. Um, we were founded in 1850. Um, as you can see there, we've got about a thousand students in total, give or take, depending on the year. Um, I always like to say that if you wanna be a face in the crowd, this is not probably the college that you can do that. Everyone knows you here, professors know you, you're um, a pretty integral part of our campus community. Um, and so we're, we're a small school and, and our student to professor ratio is about 13 to one. Um, when you're in some of those intro bio course or some of those it might be a little bit bigger. And then as you make your way through your major, it typically even goes lower than 13. Um, we're located about 45 minutes from Cleveland in Northeast Ohio. This is an exciting time to be a Cleveland Browns fan. So if you come here, we're actually doing well. Um, so we have a really good location. That's really nice for our students for internships um, to go up and, and have a nice area to go to in a major city. Bachelor of Arts, so your BA. And then we do have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. So unless you're doing nursing, the other degrees you're gonna be getting are um, all gonna be classified as that Bachelor of Arts. Um, some really neat things about Hiram um, with where we are and kind of how our campus is situated is that we actually have a lot of classes in these old historic homes. So this is Kretansky Hall, which is home to our political science. They actually, it was a um, church that got moved here piece by piece that James A. Garfield used to, to go to. Um, James A. Garfield, obviously a, a past president of the United States, and he went to Hiram um, and he was a principal, I'm pretty sure, which is also just a fancy term back then for, for being the president. So um, a lot of our classes are set up in these old school homes, um, a lot of classroom uh, discussion based. And so there's a couple more I wanted to show you. Uh, this is Bonnie Castle, home of our English department. And again, it's just, you can see how the tables are situated. It's kind of that homey feel you go and you're sitting with your classmates and you're discussing um, your coursework and having those group discussions. And then we've got a couple others here. We've got some that house history um, we actually have, I don't think it's pictured here, but the Treehouse is a really cool building that we also have on campus that's for sustainability. Um, and, and the way they built that building is really cool too. So just a bunch of old historic houses. A lot of the houses that are next to these houses are actually home to our faculty and staff. My supervisor actually lives like right across the street from, from our building, which is really neat. And then 
just a shot there that's looking at Gerstacker, which is our, one of our science buildings. And if you would go down that archway and go to the left, there would be a li our library, which is actually getting renovated thanks to some philanthropy. Um, so lots of cool things. Our campus is really pretty, especially right now in the fall when everything is peaking leaves wise, we're surrounded by a lot of trees and um, it's just a really, really pretty campus. All right. So we're going to talk about the new liberal arts. Um, we coined that because as the 21st century, we keep going in the 21st century, um, what you need as a future employee has changed. And so we've kind of here at Hiram figured out, let's, let's see what we can do to make you more, you know, a better employee and more successful in your career. So um, we have an integrated study. We're really big on high impact experiences. So going out and doing things hands on. Um, we also implemented um, a program called Tech and Trek, which uses mindful technology. Um, and we'll kind of get to that in more detail there. So, um, yep. So what we do at Hiram that's a little different is we do a semester system um, that's called the 12-3 plan or the Hiram plan. So instead of doing 15 weeks straight through, um, what we're actually doing is we split our semester into 12 weeks and three weeks. And so you have a break between those during the 12 week, you take your typical three to four courses, um, you finish everything up in the fall, it's before Thanksgiving break, you actually get a whole week off. So you're not worrying about uh, the typical papers and end of the year wrap up with those classes before finals in December. So actually you're just done, you get a whole week off for Thanksgiving and then you come back for our three week semester. In that three week semester, you get um, to take one of four options basically. And so the first one there you see on the screen is you can take a course. Um, so they like to say it's an intensive course. I, the reason it's called intensive is because you're just taking that course only by itself for three weeks. So typically you're, you're going about four times a week to that class for a couple hours a day instead of maybe less times for, you know, less times of a week for less time of day. Um, and so if maybe if you're not that good at math, you can take math. And this is the only course then that you're worrying about for three weeks. You're not having to balance that with anything else. Um, another thing that you can do during that three week um, is, I want to make sure we load it. So there we go is guided research. Um, this is a really, really great opportunity for students to work with uh, faculty, with their professors and get on some research projects, doing independent research and kind of getting that hands-on learning how to do those more technical skills that you are gonna need, especially when you're pursuing careers you know, in the sciences. A lot of graduate programs are looking for students who have research experience. And so during this three week, you can do, like I said, independent, you can do with a professor, some of them are paid um, as well, which is really neat. So that's a really good option for our students as well. The third option, which obviously is not happening at the current moment, um, crossing our fingers that you know sometime soon we can all um, go and travel again, but um, we do study abroad, study away. For those who don't know, study away is that's basically just going somewhere else in the United States and having experiences there. Um, the way we do it at Hiram is our faculty actually lead the trips. So they take our students on these three weeks and they've been all over to China, to Rome, to um, almost every continent except for Antarctica. Um, so all, all six minus, minus that one. So uh, they go all over, which is really nice. We actually um, have in a study away aspect, we actually have a couple of cool places by our campus as well. We have um, a field station that a lot of our students do research at. And then we also have a field station up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan called Northwoods. And that's a really good option for our students during the three week as well. So obviously when, when times change a little bit, um, that's an option for our students as well. And then the last option that you can do during this three week semester is an internship or an observational experience. We have a really great career and academic center here led by some really great people and they bring in um, internship fairs and lots of, we have lots of connection with alumni in the area. Um, so this is a good, for those maybe who are going into a field where, like business, where you can do multiple things in business, this is a really good option for you as a student and kind of see, well, let's see if this is the area of business I want to go in, or if this is the area of sport management that I want to go in. Um, so again, these are the four options you can do during that three week. 
And this happens every semester for us, both fall and spring. So if you go for four years, you get eight chances to kind of mix and match things that you want to do and have those experiences. All right, and I mentioned Tech and Trek, and I do want to shout out, that's actually my little brother there on the screen. Um, he's, he's right there, yep, circle him, that's my little brother. Um, he's a senior, so he's not that little, but he's little to me. So one of the really cool things uh, that we do here at Hiram is actually we're the first one-to-one -one tech uh, school in the state of Ohio. So all of our students get an iPad Pro, an Apple Pencil, a keyboard bundle, and yes, you read that right, a pair of hiking boots. So the reason behind this is, is, is multiples. One, we want our students to come in, be on an even playing field, have the same tech, not worry about going out, buying the latest technology and stressing out about that. So when all of our students come here, already, boom, same platform, you're good to go. Um, this has really been helpful for the coronavirus as well, having the same tech. Um, a second thing is that we want our students to be able to use technology because obviously tech is not going away. You're gonna need this as a skill um, to have as a future employee in any field you're going into. So we're giving you the tools right away to say, hey, here's the tech, let's figure out ways to use this and use it effectively and efficiently so it's gonna help you in your career. Um, and that's really, really helpful um, in, in all fields as you're moving forward um, in your career. So that's kind of the one aspect. And then obviously there's the trek part of tech and trek with the hiking boots. And we like to say it's kind of symbolic. They're obviously real hiking boots. They're very nice. I steal my brothers, wore them this morning. Um, they're very nice hiking boots, but we want you to be able to like use the tech, but put down the tech at the same time, right? So, or, you know, how can we use the tech while we're out doing our experiences, maybe in our internship, maybe in our guided research, maybe when we're at one of the field stations. So, you know, how can we be mindful about that technology? Because again, it's not going away. We want you to be able to go out and enjoy the world and experience all that it has to offer that's not behind the screen. Um, so that's our tech and trek program. It's really nice. The iPads are nice. I'm using mine right now. And it's, it's a great tool for our students um, all around. And I'm going to hand it off to Haley, and she's going to take it from here. OK, so talking about tuition and scholarships, I know that that can be a really large part of making your college decision and which colleges that you decide to look at, ultimately. Um, Hiram actually has a new tuition model that started this year. So it is called Learn More, Earn More, Spend Less. And as a part of that, we actually lowered our tuition by 30% um, and got rid of mandatory fees. So all of those activity, registration, move-in fees, we completely got rid of those. And together, that actually lowers the published price by 35%. So our tuition is now down to 24,500, which is a lot more comparable with public schools and state schools. Alongside of that new lower tuition price, we are offering two free summer courses after every single year. So that means that you know, you can either graduate early, you could potentially graduate in three years. Um, you can take courses that you've always been interested in, but you haven't had time to take, or you can actually um, add a double major, add a minor. It's very common at Hiram that students minor in multiple things, major in multiple things. Um, and now this will make it even easier to fit that into your schedule. Um, another thing that you can do with the two free summer courses is that if you have a really heavy semester, let's say you're a STEM major, you're having a lot of different science courses, or you're a student athlete or you're in the theater and you have a lot of extracurricular activities going on, you can actually take one less course during that 12 week semester and then take a course over the summer for free to make that up and be perfectly um, on time to graduate. So those two free summer courses have been really helpful to our students. This past summer was actually the first time that we, we ran those two free summer courses and it was uh, a really great experience and students really appreciated it. Um, those will also be online or in person. We have students all over the country and even all over the world. So we want everyone to be able to take advantage of those even if they're going to be home for the summer. 
The kind of last part of the new tuition model that we have is direct referrals to paid summer internships. So how this is working is that there was a fund created uh, by our alumni that if you are you know, choosing between having a summer job and having a really great internship opportunity, but maybe that internship opportunity doesn't pay any money, uh, you can actually apply through Hiram to get money to pay for that internship opportunity. Um, even if the nonprofit or, or other large company can't pay you for your time, you can apply and then you can choose to have that internship along with you know, the funding that goes behind it. Okay, looking more into student life at Hiram, um, we are, as Emma mentioned, about a thousand students and we have a few different dining options on campus. So uh, this is our main dining hall. It is unlimited. So students don't have to pick between different dining plans. It's all one and it's all unlimited. So you can swipe in um, and get into the dining hall as many times per day as you would like and as many times per week, which is really convenient. And there are different stations, as you can see here. Um, there is a pizza station, pasta station, salad bar, grill, international, soup, um, sandwiches. So there's lots of different options to choose from and those change every single meal. So you're always eating something different. Um, on the upper right here, you see a picture of the eating part of our dining hall. And actually at the top, we have all of the different flags representing our student body, staff, and faculty. So even though we are in small town Ohio, in Hiram, Ohio, we have people from all over the world that come and uh, study and, and teach at our university. Um, we actually have students from all over the US as well. Our second biggest recruiting state is actually California and third is Texas. So you meet a lot of different people from a lot of different places um, in Ohio uh, at Hiram. Moving on to living on campus, um, students are in their first year usually required to live in traditional residence halls or dorm style living. Um, and those are usually double rooms. So you'll be paired with a roommate, whether that's someone you request or someone that you're paired with based on a questionnaire, talking about your habits, um, whether you get up early, uh, sleep in late, all those kinds of things. Every room comes with you know, a desk, a dresser, uh, bed, closet for each student. So you don't have to bring any furniture. Um, and every single hall has either you know a kitchenette, um, a lounge, places where you can hang out with your friends, um, usually pool tables, uh, ping pong tables, things for you to do. Um, and they also have an RA or resident assistant, which is an older student that lives on the hall and is there to answer any of your questions, plan social gatherings, um, and they are there you know to support you during your first year. Once you get older at Hiram, you have a few other options as to where you can live. Uh, you can still live in uh, a dorm or residence style hall. Um, that's right here. This is uh, Bowler Hall. It is an upper class dorm, but we also have suite style living and townhouse living. And those are um, a little bit more independent options. So the suite style is basically a common room with four to eight students living off of it with a private bathroom and a private small kitchenette and lounge. So that's a little bit more, um, you know, personal and, and private for students. But then the townhouses are a step up from that in that they have a full kitchen, washer and dryer in unit, and it's usually four students living there. So those students usually um, cook and clean for themselves. And so it really just depends on what level of independence you'd like while you're in college. And then obviously dorm life has looked a little bit different now in, um, in the pandemic. And so what Hiram has done to maximize you know, safety precautions and all of that is actually give each individual student their own room. 
So instead of putting um, two new students in a double, like I talked about, we actually had enough space with our newer townhouses and suites to renovate and open up one of our older dorms over the summer and allow every single student coming in to have their own individual room. And that's really helped, you know, with social distancing, um, you know, students don't have to worry about masks within their own private space in their room. Okay, and then talking about athletics and student life, um, we are a mostly residential campus. So most of our students live on campus all four years, meaning that there is lots of stuff going on during the week and on the weekends. Uh, this past weekend, for example, there was a comedy show, there was putt-putt, there was LED laser tag. There were a lot of different things going on that students could get involved with. Um, that is alongside all of our different varsity sports. So we have 18 different division three sports at Hiram uh, from football to um, cheer and stunt to swimming and diving. We've got a lot of different sports um, and about 50% of our students are actually involved in those sports. So we do have a lot of different support for student athletes and for students who are involved in a variety of, of clubs and other extracurriculars. We also have 40 plus clubs on campus. So those are student run and those range from um, student government to um, rock climbing club to video game club, um, intramural sports. So we've got a lot of different opportunities to get involved. And we actually have a saying that, you know, if you can't find a club, you can make it. So you can actually bring the club to our, our student senate or student government and, you know, get it approved and get the funding to start your own club based on your own personal passions. And then contacting us. So um, Emma and I's contact information is right here. And then Sophia is one of our other admission counselors. Uh, you can feel free to contact us at any time for any reason, whether it's about Hiram or about the general college process. Um, we are rolling admissions. So for students that are thinking about applying um, for fall of next year, we don't have a specific deadline that you need to apply to. It's, it's really on your own time when you want to fill out the application. Um, we are also test optional as of this year. So you do not need to send your test scores into us. Um, the exception to that would be nursing direct entry, but we also have um, some different pathways that we've added this year to, you know, allow some students who may not have been able to take tests to uh, still enter that program. Um, our application is online. It is both on our website and on the common application. And we don't see one as better than the other. You can choose whichever one you would like to fill out. If you are looking to visit campus, we do have a few opportunities for that as well. Um, you can schedule an individual virtual visit uh, where you get to meet with a tour guide, uh, one of us admission counselors, and a coach or, or professor. Um, you can come in person and do the exact same thing on campus. And we also have uh, open houses that will be coming up. Um, one is October 24th and the other one is November 14th. So you can register for those and those will be in person. So whatever your comfortability level is, um, we have different events where you can get to know Hiram. Um, Emma, is there anything that you would like to add? Emma, I, I can't hear you. I think you're muted. I am muted. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I, was to, I was telling Haley there earlier, for those of you guys in there, my, my neighbor decided it was the, the right time to mow the lawn. Um, so I was, I was muted. But 
I was saying a good question that typically I get um, or we get is what are our stronger programs academically? Um, a couple of really good ones. I would say sciences in general, we're very strong in our nursing program. Um, we have a program called Biomedical Humanities, which kind of prepares our students for becoming a doctor, going to med school, being a PT, um, PA, a PT might be something different, but PA. Um, and so basically what that is, is you're doing all your science uh, coursework. So that, you know, biomedical part, and then the humanities aspect would be um, that bedside manner, but also, you know, learning the ethical and philosophical um, stuff that you might need to know in terms of like end of life care, things of that questions and things that you, you want to be prepared for. So you're not just doing only science and not having that prepared. So that's a really cool program that we have here. Um, and then outside the sciences, um, we have a creative writing major, which is really cool, focuses on nonfiction and then accounting and of our program I just like to talk about with students in general um, but the sciences are, are pretty good here I don't know if you had more Haley yeah I would also mention you mentioned PT school we have a lot of students who are a part of a program called uh, integrative exercise science so that is for students who are looking to go and become a physical therapist athletic trainer um, dietitian nutritionalist and that's a pretty popular program as well um, but we are a liberal arts school and we have a lot of different programs across um, across the board. So we have a lot to choose from at Hiram. Um, one other thing I will add that I have not talked about yet is scholarships. So when you apply to Hiram, um, that automatically serves as your scholarship application. There is no separate form that you need to fill out. Um, once you get, you know, your decision back with your application, um, you'll actually find out what your scholarship is with that. And that's usually based on a holistic review of your application. So looking at many different parts of it um, and awarding you a scholarship based on that. And then I will say um, for those who might be out of state, that our tuition is the same in state as it is out of state. So that's also something to keep in mind too. Um, our price is the same. So you're not having to, to look for a different price if maybe you're outside of Ohio, um, which is really nice. I don't know many other schools that maybe do something like that, but it's, it's the same price at 24,500. Um, so we try to make it as affordable as, it can, as we can be for, for a liberal arts school. Um, dropping that tuition price was really nice. As Haley mentioned, the summer courses are really, really great. Um, to kind of maybe fast track. And we also do have some academic programs that um, have three-year options um, so that you could, even without the summer courses, just alone their three-year degree uh, pathway that you could take. So, you know, finding ways to give our students a quality education affordably and giving them kind of the options with our three weeks to, to do a lot of those experiential things that employers are looking for. They're, they want to see that you've done some stuff outside the classroom. And I'm sure most schools talk about that. Your teachers talk about that, your counselors do, um, but we kind of really customize it. So you have that three weeks to, to do those things. So um, definitely trying to make it more affordable and to prepare you more to succeed um, because, you know, it's, it's right now getting jobs, you know, you need to, you need to be as prepared as possible. And so we kind of have a lot of options for you to, to have that experience. Yeah, and those um, types of internships, uh, study abroad, research, those are not things that you need to go out and find on your own. Um, as Emma mentioned, we have a career development center. And so if you have any questions or you're looking for a specific type of internship, or maybe you need help um, writing your resume, writing a cover letter, uh, doing a mock interview. Um, we have people that can help match you with those internships, those jobs, um, and really help you, you know, get to where you want to be and, and, and be prepared. Um, it looks like we have a question about what are our most popular majors and any new majors. So, um, Talking about our most popular majors, Emma just mentioned that a little bit, um, but definitely things in the pre-health field um, and sciences, but also uh, business. 
So within business, we have a few different majors. We have sport management, um, accounting and financial management, uh, regular management, marketing, communication, and a lot of those different things um, students, students choose to major in because it's preparing them um, to enter the world of business. And we also have two different minors um, that are popular with those majors. So one is a minor in entrepreneurship and the other one is a minor in leadership. So you can kind of pick and choose what you would like um, to, to build your major and minor. Um, but even if you are a business major, you don't have to major or minor in business, uh, something business related. It's, it's a nice place where you can kind of combine a lot of different passions. So, um, you know, maybe you are a biology major, but you go on a study abroad trip for the French department um, and you learn French and immerse yourself um, in the French countryside and French art and culture for three weeks. It's, it's a great place to kind of explore those different things and learn how that can all be applicable to your future and your career. And then some new majors, I know one that we just added was crime law and justice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a relatively new one. I know integrative exercise science is actually fairly new um, from 2016. And they, I, I think it's, I just talked to one of the professors and that's probably one of the fastest growing uh, majors that we have on campus. So that's a really good one too. Um, performing arts kind of got reworked into to one different, uh, I think, centralized major as well. I don't know. There's a couple more, Haley, you might know. Um, yeah, I know. I think um, crime law and justice is our newest one that really is focusing on not only law and, you know, the, the justice system, but also the ethics um, and sociology behind all of that. So it really is a pretty is, uh, interdisciplinary major in that it combines a lot of different subjects, even um, psychology and anthropology. And so you're taking a lot of courses that prepare you to be a really well-rounded uh, either lawyer, judge, um, law enforcement officer, all of those kinds of things. And I think that's the benefit of a liberal arts school too, um, just in general, but even specifically at higher, like Kaylee was saying, is you get such a good foundational Especially if you don't, you know, maybe if you don't know what you're going to do as well when you step on, but onto a college campus or you have kind of an idea, having that taking, you know, just a breadth of courses, um, having that flexibility more at smaller schools, small private schools, um, you have more flexibility in your core classes and kind of what you're taking as opposed to some state schools. It's kind of there's more things you have to take prescribed in a sense. And at a liberal arts, it's like, come see what works for you. We're going to give you a good foundational base to make you a well rounded. Um, student and so that when you're looking again in your career you've got you know these skills that, that are applicable to any I think that's a good benefit of arts in general hopefully I didn't freeze you're good it, it froze a little but you're, Did I you're freeze? good Haley froze. <laughs> <laughs> you're good um, any other questions that you guys have no I will just add that, um, you know, what you were saying, Emma, our curriculum, I think, really allows for that type of exploration. Um, you know, studies show that about 70% of students come in as a first year undecided. So, you know, we don't want to put any pressure on that, but you will be paired with an advisor to choose classes um, and start thinking about things, start thinking about big questions, uh, whether that's, you know, where do you see yourself in the future? What do you want to accomplish um, in your three or four years at Hiram? Uh, what, what are you passionate about? What do you want to explore? Um, but also larger questions about society, uh, about humanity. Um, you know, every first year at Hiram has to take a first year enduring questions seminar. And that course, um, you know, talks about big issues, whether that's politics, um, climate change, uh, artificial intelligence, um, poverty, uh, all these kinds of things, you know, what is justice? And you get to discuss with a professor and with other students about what that means to you. And then, you know, learn how to really write. It, it prepares you to write, to use different resources at Hiram, um, to learn really how to be a successful student while thinking about 
some of these really big questions from different angles, different perspectives. Um, and I think that's something that sets us apart in that we prepare um, the learners, but also the leaders of tomorrow. Um, we prepare you to be a lifelong learner um, and to keep asking those questions and solving you know, the problems that, that are plaguing our world today. So um, we really try to prepare our students through internships, um, hands-on experiences, and whether that's, you know, at our field station just down the road or in another country, um, through research, through our capstone project, um, to really deal with these uh, big issues and, and become change makers in society. Any other questions? See, that was so beautiful. <laughs> um, all right. Okay. Well, we'll Josh, we'll hand it. We'll hand it back off to you, Emma. If you want to add something at the end, I was gonna say Hiram's just a really neat. It's a cool little school with really good people. Um, my my older brother went there. My younger brother goes there they talked about um I always say it's just got a good vibe when, when you go to a school you kind of get that feeling it's got a good vibe so if you have the chance to do a virtual visit um you got a chance to come on campus um just in general the school you're looking at but it's it's a really special place and I, I think Haley Haley knows what I'm talking about it's, it's a really neat little little school so awesome thank you thank you both so much for sharing about Hiram um, thank you to everyone who joined us. Um, we really appreciate having you. Hopefully you learned a lot of great things. Um, when you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We really appreciate any feedback that you can provide there. Also, like I mentioned before, this is just one of many sessions being hosted as part of the CTCL Virtual Days program. So um, come back and sign up for some other sessions. And you can also find this session's recording as well as recordings of all the others online at the same place where you registered. So um, it'd be great uh, to come back and check out those. Thank you again to Haley and Emma. Um, thanks to the attendees and everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.